Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is WarDogSack back with another video for you guys. In today's video, we are continuing on with the offensive security learning path. So to try hack me. This is the Alfred room. It says exploit Jenkins to gain an initial shell, then escalate your privileges by exploiting Windows authentication tokens. Let's go ahead and dive into it. <laughs> Task 1, Initial Access. In this room, we'll learn how to exploit a common misconfiguration on a widely used automation server, Jenkins. This tool is used to create continuous integration slash continuous uh, development pipelines, which is CI, CD, for y'all who don't know, that allow developers to automatically deploy their code once they made changes to it. After which, we'll use an interesting privilege escalation method to get full access. Since this is a Windows application, we'll be using the Nishang. Uh, to gain initial access, the repository contains a useful set of scripts for initial access, enumeration, and privilege escalation. In this case, we'll be using the reverse shell scripts. Please note that this machine does not respond to ping slash also known as ICMP. It may take a few minutes to boot up. As you can see here, I've already ran my MAP scan, and these are the flags I have it set for it, and it's going into this particular text file in case I need to reference it later. All right, so let's answer some questions here. How many TCP ports are open? And let's go ahead and count them. Let's see, one, two, three. So it looks like three is gonna be what we're looking for here. What is the username and password for the login panel? First off, you have to find the login panel. As you can see here, there's a web server running on port 8080. All right, so first off, let's take a look at this original, um, I guess, homepage, right? It says, rest in peace, uh, Bruce Wayne, donations to Alfred at yada, yada, yada. Now, if it's like a CTF type room, you can look at the page source for any type of clues. Um, you can take a look at these images as well. Sometimes I like to put information inside of these um, image files and what have you. But as you can see, there's nothing of use here. So... What you can do is you can type in the IP address and then a colon and then the port you want to uh, take a look at here. And since there's a web server running on port 8080, I want to take a look at. That's what I typed in here. And it took me to this login page for Jenkins. Now, you can try some initial things here, like common, commonly used passwords, right? So I'm going to try admin and admin and see if that works. All right, so don't save this. And let's see if it goes through. You can try other things like admin, password, root, root, super user, super user. It looks like admin and password is what we're looking for here. You can also just do a Google search on the, what's the default credentials, credentials for uh, Jenkins or whatever system you're trying to get into. It's a lot of times lazy um, admins or maybe forgetful admins will not change the system defaults. So you can log in using system defaults. But anyway, let's see here. What is the username and password for the login panel? Well, as we saw there, it's going to be admin and password. Oh, sorry, not admin and password. Admin and admin That's what we're looking for here. You can also use brute forcing tools like Hydra. I'm assuming that's what they want you to use here. But as you can see, I just guessed it. So there's different ways to get inside of the system. And they want you to go inside of Jenkins, look around, and then I, I'm assuming to take advantage of this particular um, output or uh, input here to get that reverse shell onto the box. Also, you got to start up the Python 3 HTTP server and then get the user.txt um, flag. So be sure to try this and see if you can get it. If you can't, come back to the video and we'll go through it. All right, I've already started up my Python um, HTTP server and I've already got the um, script ready to go here. But let's go ahead and jump forward here. Hey everybody, just a quick little blurb here. As you can see here, most people that view my channel are not subscribers. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying the video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps get me in the algorithm, helps spread the good word out there, helps bring more people and increase our glorious community here. All right, I'm all about helping out others. I know what it's like to come up in cybersecurity or even try to get into cybersecurity and not knowing where to look. I'm just having this channel up so I can help out other people. All right, that's all I got. So I already have my web server spun up and I'm inside the Jenkins consoles right now and we need to figure out a way to take advantage of this situation here. Now, if we go to, let's see here, 
run the Jenkins main page. And you go down to the bottom, you can see something called project. So I clicked on that. And then I want to configure here so you can check out the configuration information. I just typed in reverse shell for the description. Went down to the actual build area, execute Windows batch command, and copy and pasted what they have in here and just replaced it um, with my information here. All right, it's going to go and download this script here from my attacker machine, and then it's going to launch that script and connect back to a netcat listener that I've spun up right here on port 1234. All right, so that's done. Let's go ahead and hit uh, apply. All right. And let's see if that actually ran it. I think you have to, there's another step you have to do in here. So let's do save. And then let's go to, should be a place in there to actually build it. Build now, maybe that's it. So let's go ahead and click around in here. Oh, there we go. So it looks like it's 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 already running, right? So we just have to wait and see and see if it connects back. All right, anyway, so while we're waiting for this, all right, cool. It looks like it finished. And if we do a who am I, you know the usual stuff, right? We're logged in as Bruce. And let's see here. You can also do a um, I forward slash priv. There we go. You can take a look at the privileges, right, that you have for this particular account. But all right, let's go ahead and let's see if we can clear this out. Nope, we can't. All right. So anyway, let's go ahead and look around in here. Let's do a dir, nothing. So go into users. That looks interesting. Users, do a dir, see who's in here. There's Bruce. So let's see if we can get into Bruce's account or a directory here. Do another dir. And let's check the desktop. It's probably where the flag is going to be located. Do another dir, and lo and behold, there it is. So let's go ahead and cat that user.txt file, like so. And there's the file contents that we need. Awesome. So let's go ahead and plug this into this and continue on to task number two here. It says task two, switching shells. To make the privilege escalation easier, let's switch to a interpreter shell using the following process. Use MSF Venom to create a Windows interpreter reverse shell using the following payload. So let's go ahead and just copy and paste. And then, of course, we're going to replace the placeholders. So let's go ahead and let me just open up another tab. All right. So paste this over and, of course, replace the placeholders with um, your information they're going to use. All right, so it looks good. Let's go ahead and generate this. So the payload generates an encoded x86-64 reverse TCP interpreter payload. Payloads are usually encoded to ensure that they are transmitted correctly and also to evade antivirus products. An antivirus product may not recognize the payload and won't flag it as malicious. In modern day world, this will most likely be detected, even if you do try to use some of this here. So you'll have to do some additional evasion techniques and whatnot, but you get the gist of it, right? After creating this payload, download it to the machine using the same method as the previous step. So let's go ahead and do that. The payload on the target box, you can see here I downloaded it onto the machine. There it is. It's getting ready to fire off. Before that, you got to start up a interpreter session here. Oh, well, this multi-handler is what you want to start up i should say as you see mine is started up now i did try to follow along with the try to do it in like a one-liner here but for some reason it didn't work for me so i had to go in and do it manually and i checked it here using the options command right so everything looks good to go now pivoting back on to the target box i'm gonna fire off that shell Okay, it looks like it worked this time. I had to go through and manually set the payload again, and I just set it to this here, right? So if I scroll back up, you can see that right here. I did options again, and then to verify my information, and then hit run again. And now it has a successful connection back, all right? Now, if you're not familiarized with 
the options that you can use this help to generate some information for some commands you may want to take a look at here all right you can do stuff like let's see here like ps right to check processes on the machines if you want to migrate to something else you can also use like get system to elevate privileges if you need to you can do all kinds of things in here right and they believe that's all for now but let's go ahead and continue on to task number three privilege escalation see what they have for us here now that we have initial access, let's use token impersonation to gain system access. Windows uses tokens to ensure that accounts have the right to privileges to carry out particular actions. Um, account tokens are assigned to an account when users log in or authenticated. This is usually done by LSAS.exe. Think of this as an authentication process. This access token consists of the following user SID, security identifier, group SIDs, and privileges. Amongst other things, more detailed information can be found here, so check that out. There are two types of access tokens primary access tokens, those associated with a user account that are generated on logon impersonation tokens. These allow a particular process or thread in a process to gain access to resources using the token of another user slash client process. For an impersonation token, there are different levels. You got security, anonymous, current user, client cannot impersonate another user client. Security identification, current user client can get the identity and privileges of a client but cannot impersonate that client. Security impersonation, current user client can impersonate that client's security contacts on the local system. And security delegation, current user client can impersonate the users or sorry, the client's security contacts on a remote system. Where the security context is a, a data structure that contains users relevant security information. The privileges of an account, which are either given to the account when created or inherited from a group, allow a user to carry out particular actions. Here are the most commonly used, commonly abused privileges. SE impersonate privilege, SE assign, um, SETCB, SE backup, SE restore, etc., etc. You can see the rest there. And be sure to check out this link here to read more about information regarding that. All right, now let's go ahead and follow along here. View all the privileges using who am I forward slash priv, which I showed you all earlier. So who am I and forward slash priv, like so. That's right, we need to drop into a shell first and then do it. All right, now let's try it. Forward slash priv, there you go, it's got everything listed out here you can see if they're enabled or disabled by looking at the state area there so that's done you can see that two privileges se debug privilege and se impersonate privilege are enabled let's use incognito module that will allow us to exploit this vulnerability enter load incognito to load the incognito model or module in metasploit please note that you may need to use the in Cognito command and the previous if the previous command doesn't work also ensure that your metasploit is up to date all right so let's get out of this first let's go ahead and background this all right so they want us to do incognito let's do load okay all right success oh all right whatever okay so it's ready to go looks like to check which Tokens are available, enter list tokens dash G. So let's do that. All right, there we go there. Delegation tokens available. Awesome. It says use the impersonate token built in administrator's command and impersonate the administrator's token. So let's go ahead and do that. successfully awesome uh what is the output when you run the get you would uh command so let's go ahead and do that get you would there's our answer what should set it up there it says it says it in there right so impersonating into the authority um, system so it's going to be our answer here even though you have a higher privilege token, you may not have the permissions of a privileged user. This is due to the way Windows handles permissions. It uses the primary token of the process. 
and not the impersonate token to determine what the process can or cannot do. Ensure that you migrate to a process with correct permissions. The above questions answer. The safest process to pick is the services.exe process. First, use the ps command to view processes and find the PID of the services.exe, then migrate into it using this here. All right, right? Did I say something about that earlier? So ps, and then they want us to migrate into services.exe. So let's go ahead and try to find that on here. All right, so we're scrolling, we're scrolling. Make sure I didn't pass it somewhere. There we go. So it looks like it's going to be the PID of 668. So let's go ahead and migrate into that. All right, so migrate 668. There we go. And it says, read the root.txt file located at C Windows System 32 config. So let's go ahead and do that. Awesome. So now we've migrated successfully in there. Where are we now? It's 32. Okay, awesome. And when you go into config, so cd into config. All right. Let's see what's in here. There's root. We can do, yeah, cat root.txt. And there we go. So this looks like what we're looking for here. Hopefully that didn't um, mess up something here because it can't recognize. Awesome. Cool. So that wraps up this room. And if you found the video of value, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Helps out the channel. Helps get the good word out there. Helps grow our glorious community here. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos as we progress more and more with this offensive security learning path inside of Try Hack Me. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day, and I will see you later.